come into play in this story is a Scipione del Ferro. Okay. So a little bit about uh, uh, del Ferro. <clears throat> he lectured at the University of Bologna. If anyone were going to do a presentation on the University of Bologna, it would be good to know that this important person uh, <laughs> lectured there for over a quarter of a century. <laughs> He was the first to solve a particular type of cubic equation. This is a big deal. This is why we talk about him over 500 years later. <clears throat> is it 500 years? I'm uh, not sure when he solved it, but about 500 years later. He solved what we call the, dep the depressed cubic, and this is important as well. It has a cubic term. There is no square term, but it has the linear term x to the first and the constant. Uh, he solves that. No one had done that before. And, uh, you know, some things, like Becky, I said, if you had seen a tablet, I think you would have gotten the pattern pretty quickly. I'd be very surprised, pleasantly surprised, if anyone in the room figured this out, given a decade or so, you know, without, with the tools he had available to him. Uh, this is not a trivial problem. This is, takes insight, creative thinking, all that. He kept it a secret. One of the things we're going to see is... <clears throat> In the Renaissance times, the mathematicians had to debate each other. If, uh, if a, uh, you know, an academic wants a job today, well, he has to publish papers. And you can say, look, I published these papers. They're in prestigious journals, a few other awards, and et cetera. Great, we'll hire you. Well, if you want to get hired in the Renaissance times as a mathematician, you have to say, well, who'd you debate? Did you win? Oh, you, you beat uh, someone else? Great. We'll let you teach at our university. So he kept it a secret. They didn't publish back then. <clears throat> a little different than today. Uh, on his deathbed, he shares his secret with his student, uh, Antonio Maria Fior. And again, all these names, you see various spellings of them. Uh, you see Fior with an E at the end. Uh, uh, several names we're going to see. There's various spellings. Uh, uh, sometimes you see D-A-L. So, he solves the depressed cubic. Okay, another person who comes into this story, we're going to see how all this ties together. Uh, Niccolo Fontana Tartaglia. Okay, well, a little bit about him before we get to his mathematics. Uh, born in 1500, in 1512, when he's 12 year old, the French army comes in and sacks his hometown of Brescia. The French army kills 46,000 residents. It's a massacre. This is not typical of the Renaissance. The French army was paying them back for being defeated in a previous battle. So they said, well, we'll, we'll make a lesson of people who want to resist. So when they came back the second time, uh, for men, women, children, the whole bit. Uh, Tartaglia, his mother, takes him to the uh, local cathedral. When the, when the you know, invading army comes in, what do you do? You go to the cathedral. Well, the, uh, the French army didn't uh, honor it. They came in and they slaughtered everyone in the cathedral. They left him for dead. A soldier stabbed him with his saber, cut his jaw and his palate. He had a uh, speech impediment for the rest of his life. And Tartaglia means the stammerer. That's how he's known. Niccolo right, right. the stammerer. He had a speech impediment. And what always kind of surprised me is it wasn't just his nickname. It's how he published his work. That's how he was known. I guess if you had a speech impediment since 12, you'd be known that way. It wouldn't confuse you with anyone else. <clears throat> He, uh, he is recognized to be a uh, bright young man, and uh, he gets a uh, patron, and he goes to Padua uh, to study, uh, I believe, in the university. I need to uh, find a source for that. Um, but Padua is the second oldest university in Italy, so uh, he was attending classes there. Uh, he gradually earns a reputation as a mathematician by winning these debates. He's a very uh, great person. <clears throat> well... Fior, now remember who Fior is. Fior is the student of uh, Del Ferro. Del Ferro solves the first cubic equation, gives the secret to his student Fior on his deathbed, and uh, Fior wants to gain a name for himself. So he says, hey, Tartaglia, you're becoming a kind of famous mathematician. I'll challenge you because I've got the nuclear bomb. You know, I've got this great thing that no one else has. I have the solution to the cubic. So they set up a debate. They each get to ask the other 30 questions. It's, uh, you know, the questions are given to a notary. Uh, they, they have a month uh, to, pay, to prepare for the debate. Fiore is not really considered one of the great mathematicians. 
he was in the right place at the right time. His teacher gave him, uh, you know, a uh, powerful tool. Uh, Tartaglia is considered a good mathematician. Fior comes up with 30 questions. They're all the depressed cubic. All 30 are the same type of question. Because that's what he knows. Tartaglia comes up with 30 questions for his opponent. All different parts of mathematics. All different things. Uh, <clears throat> well, Tartaglia, I guess, gets wind that Fior, you know, uh, has this knowledge of a particular type of equation. Uh, Tartaglia has discovered a solution to a quadratic as well, but it's not the same one. It's when you have x cubed, x squared, and a constant, a different one. So he can't solve the problem that's going to be asked of him. So he works feverishly for this month, preparing, and he figures out the problem. To me, this, this puts Tartaglia in, you know, good company. Uh, you know, you know, uh, you know, three and a half thousand years since the Babylonians told us how to do the quadratic, and he figures it out in a month because the pressure's on. 